friends. I want to wish all the couples a happy Valentine's Day. I hope you all have a romantic evening and your carriage ride around the park is filled with horse farts. I've been single for too long because, you know, dating apps are digital dumpster diving. The only thing that's got me through it are romance novels. Mm. But not just any romance novel. I'm talking about the unsung heroines of the erotic. All the black women writing the best ones. For example, the queen of black historical romance, Beverly Jenkins. Just check out the passage from her novel, Indigo, which I imagine is read to me by Jesse Williams. She moved her hands over the strength of his back, kissing him, flicking her tongue against the edges of his lips, experimenting with the boldness his passion had planted within her while his hands beneath her gown toured lustily. No man had ever touched her this way. <sighs> Damn, I remember the first time I read this, I fell right out of my chair. No, I slid out. I love how she was flicking her tongue against the edges of his lips. Ooh, you know a writer is good if they make kissing sound sexy even when it's wrong. Like, don't be licking his lips. Get that poor man some chapstick. Now, if you want to go a bit more old school in your romance, you can try Ruby Saunders. She was best known for a series following Nurse Marilyn Morgan and her steamy affairs with doctors. The series was coming at you with some hot lines. Hank was standing behind her now, and somehow his arms were around her waist. Hank pressed close to her. She could feel his breath on the back of her neck. I won't hurt you, honey. He murmured as his arms tightened around her. They sank into the cushions together. Shit! Listen, everyone knows that sinking into the cushion means good sex. Or your couch is too old. Either way, you're gonna be sore in the morning. By the way, we would never have known many of these authors if it wasn't for book publishers like Vivian Stevens. She was groundbreaking, not just because she sought out writers of color who wrote about women with real depth, but also because she wasn't afraid to publish explicit sex scenes. She changed the game with her publishing company, Candlelight Ecstasy, which is one of those terms that only belongs in a romance novel. If you combine candlelight and ecstasy in real life, you're gonna lose your eyebrows. Stevens helped publish great authors like Sandra Kitt, who wrote love stories featuring both black and white characters, so she referred to herself as a switch hitter, which I feel like means something different now. Is that when the dick is ambidextrous? Like it can hold a pin with its left and its right testicle? Anyway, one of Sandra Kitt's greatest contributions was the novel, Adam and Eva. This novel is about Eva Duncan escaping the death of her husband. She takes a vacation to the Virgin Islands and basically by the time she leaves, ha, they're just called the islands. <laughs> What I like about Sandra's writing is how she evokes the physical sensation of sex and also the butts. Just check out this passage. When Maxwell's other hand made a sensuous journey up the back of one thigh, causing a quaking through the center of her body as he pressed her buttocks to bring her against his distinct, hard, masculine form, she finally came to her senses, pulling her mouth away with a gasp and turning completely within the circle of his arms. Dulce, honey. Finished. Well, I wasn't. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for book club. So when your single ass is curled up with a book about people curling up with each other, make sure not to forget the black women that paved the way for you to hear lines in your head like this. They could resist each other no longer. She in her robe, skin aglow, lips pursed. He hovered above her, lustful yet firm, whispering her name, Dulce. Oof. Wait, Dulce? Really, did you write this? Don't break character. Didn't you go to acting school? No. Oh, self-taught. Okay, I see you. <laughs>